Due to the unknowns and threat associated with the weather, we're not able to gather tonight, but we did want to finish our current Wednesday night sermon series. This series is called I'm Dealing and has been focused on certain issues that hold us up or slow us down in our forward movement walk with God. In the last two weeks, we've discussed dealing with anger and guilt. Tonight will be brief but biblical when it comes to dealing with the ever-present issue of prejudice. I was told a story recently of my grandfather. He served in the Air Force in World War II, and once he arrived to his overseas destination, I was told that he made acquaintances with a ranking officer who revealed that he was from Wisconsin. My grandfather replied, yes, sir, that's America's dairy land, the cheese capital of the Midwest. And the ranking officer replied with prejudice, how does a podunk Alabama private know that? To which my grandfather replied in a slow southern drawl, sir, I read the paper, sir. Now, this is a lighthearted illustration of an unfavorable preconceived opinion found without sufficient knowledge or just grounds. It was a prejudgment directed toward an individual or a group of individuals of a certain race, culture, or creed. But while this illustration of prejudice is short and without escalation or harm, many more examples exist where prejudice goes further than an opinion that stays within the heart or a few words said in jest. Anger and guilt, as we've discussed in recent weeks, are likely issues that we've all apologized for or acknowledged as being undesirable and present in our lives at one time or another. In fact, I think if we were in a gathering tonight and asked for a show of hands of those who have ever dealt with these issues of anger and guilt, most people in a group wouldn't be too ashamed of recognizing these concerns or issues. But prejudice is not something we tend to freely admit or confess. In fact, if I look over my entire time of ministry, I can't recall a single instance when someone has approached me for counsel, revealing they are dealing with prejudice in their heart towards an individual group or race. Why is that? Was pride. It's admitting, to admit prejudice is to admit that we are wrong, admit that we are wrong about how we see other people. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 13, they look proudly around, casting disdainful glances. Well, who is they? The author is speaking of those who hold themselves above and who are quick to point out the flaws of another or, or rather than acknowledging their own. Scripture says in verse 12, they are pure in their own eyes, but they are filthy and unwashed. Let's make this biblically clear. Prejudice is sin. James chapter 2, verse 9 says, But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. Before that, in verse 1, the scripture says, My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? The hard part is admitting that we actually do this, that we would give special attention to some or clearance to some while withholding to others or reaching conclusions about others or with others. Our church must welcome all who are seeking God. And no, that doesn't mean that we allow shameless sin, but it also doesn't mean that we assume sin. And it certainly doesn't mean that we forget ourselves and our own sin. In Southern culture, many have often learned not to act on prejudice. So instead, we just keep it in without a check or we keep it in our mind and heart or we talk about it or joke about it with others who share the same opinion. And that's not right either. It's just undercover prejudice, and that's likely to be uncovered prejudice soon enough. The scripture really doesn't speak to our actions, but to our attitudes. That word favor found in James has to do with respect. Respect is a feeling. Respect is an attitude. So having an attitude of prejudgment based on race, gender, income, appearance, nationality, and the like is just downright disrespectful and is wrong before God. And therefore, we need to take it seriously. These are the ethics of true spirituality. Anyone coming into our gathering or even into our presence as we are representatives of the pure and perfect Lord Jesus Christ, they are not to be treated with disrespect and they are to be treated with the respect that God requires. Romans chapter 2 verse 11 says that God does not show favoritism. Martin Luther King said that I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. Well, prejudice assumes the content of character by the color of skin. Therefore, unless we are able to see the content of every person's character, then our conclusions need to hush. 
The scripture says that God doesn't see things like man sees them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord, the Lord looks at the heart. That's in 1 Samuel 16, 7. Therefore, until the heart is exposed, our mouth must stay closed. Author June Hunt said, those who are prejudiced have a mental slant, meaning their minds have been sided over time towards a preconception of differences. In other words, whatever is not like them is of a lesser value. If you deal with prejudice, consider these questions to process your why. Has a bad experience with one person led you to have an attitude of disrespect towards a different group of people? Have negative images of the media or a particular group of people influenced your opinion against another group of people? Has a family member or peer influence persuaded you to adopt an intolerant attitude against a certain group of people? If you can't stand questions like these and have already prepared to fire back before processing it, there's most likely and certainly an issue of pride in your heart. And remember, prejudice is a result of pride. Proverbs 26, 12 says, There is more hope for fools than for people who think that they are wise. Treating issues of prejudice have everything to do with how you see yourself. If we see ourselves as above, then we will see others as below. If we see ourselves from God's perspective, we will see ourselves valued and loved, even though we are imperfect and in need of salvation, and that's how we will see other people. We love to quote John 3.16 that God loves the world, but we often love that verse as it applies to us rather than thinking of how inclusive that is to the world around us. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Jerome Malone from Oasis Christ Church at Athens and his praise team blessed us as they led our staff in worship. We'll close out tonight with one of the songs that they led and would like to thank them for serving us and serving our community. And we look forward to being the hands and feet of Jesus and the body of Christ alongside churches like Oasis and Athens and Limestone County. Have a great evening. Stay safe. Joy is refreshing.
Lord is my comfort. 